guys that are drawn to this line of work, they're guys that are they're tough. They're trained to be tough. They're trained to, to be bulletproof, to go charge that machine gun nest or to go headlong into the face of danger. And so then we ask them at some point to be vulnerable. It's a tough switch. I wanted to serve, I knew that. And it was just like, how? How was I gonna serve my country? You know, was it gonna be in the army like my dad? And like a lot of kids in the 80s, um, I saw Top Gun. And you know, I knew at seven or eight, that was the coolest thing ever. And that's what I wanted to, to do with my life. Um, I was in pilot training. I was in kind of the second half of pilot training. So I knew that I was gonna get to go fly either a fighter or a bomber. And uh, I was getting ready to take a test, I believe. And, and somebody, you know, kind of came in our room and he was like, hey, you know, crazy thing. You know, an airplane got lost and ran into uh, one of the towers in New York. And then when the second tower was struck, you know, that's when it went from, you know, pretty happy-go-lucky to uh, the countries at war. And in a moment, and it got very serious very quick uh, for us. And I graduated pilot training and got uh, selected to go back as a instructor pilot. And so I felt like in a lot of ways, I was gonna miss out on the war. I was gonna go teach other guys how to fly airplanes and I wasn't gonna get to go. Uh, I did a tour in Korea and then I went to Germany and uh, we find out that my squadron's gonna go to Iraq. It's one of the, the craziest feelings. Um, I'm pretty newly married and I'm super sad to be leaving my wife, yet I'm so excited that I get to go do this job that I've trained for and dreamed about since I was eight. Um, but yeah, so January of 08 was my first, my first trip to Iraq. We were catching the tail end of the surge and we showed up and we replaced our sister squadron and they were busy, real busy. Um, uh, high operational tempo, dropping bombs. Um, they were, there was a lot of uh, village clearing uh, type operations and they were, uh, they were supporting that kind of effort as guys were, uh, the army was kind of making their way through Iraq. And, and so that's, the, that's what we kind of jumped into was, you know, what we considered to be a, a very important job at the time. And, and when you're when you're deployed together, you're you're tight. Like, I mean, it's you and your bros, and um, that 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 camaraderie downrange is really important. And we flew home, and and you're dropped into like the real world again, and it is super duper surreal. And and I was so happy to be home, so happy to be reunited with my wife. And I can remember thinking like. This is great. Like I'm, I'm at home with my, my wife, but I feel guilty. You know, I miss my bros. I miss the guys. You know, back and the you know the camaraderie, sitting at dinner, telling nonsense stories for you know hours. But and it's a weird. It's a weird because I was also just so happy to be touching my wife, to be getting to hold her hand, uh, to look her in the eyes when I talk to her, like all those things. Um, so I got home in uh, June of '08, and then. We get orders to go back to Iraq, and uh, um, my wife is pregnant. She's four months pregnant, and we're going to be downrange for five months. And so you can do the math, you know. Um, we were very nervous that I wasn't going to make it home uh, for my oldest birth. And to add on to that, um, all the good work that I felt like we had done the first trip in Iraq, it was like Groundhog Day. It was like, like nothing had progressed. It was, we were doing the same old things, the same, the same grind, the same mission names, like Operation Alarm Clock. You know, we did Operation Alarm Clock every morning in 08, and we're doing Operation Alarm Clock in 09. And it was like this really weird feeling that we didn't make it any better. And it was really, disheartening, you know. Um, you know, one of the things that 
that really upset me is how lightly life was taken in Iraq. Like, it, it, it seemed like that the folks that we were fighting, they didn't have the same value on life, whether it was their own, the non-combatants that were around them, and, and it started to bother me, you know, it started to, you know, really think about, you know, the lives that you know, I'm pretty sure I had taken. Um, it didn't matter that, that they were the quote-unquote enemy. Their life was no less precious. And I think about that a lot. Like, I, I, I do. I think about it daily. That that's a, a son. You know, maybe a father. You know, maybe a brother. Um... I, I didn't look in the eyes of the, the people I was fighting. Like, I wasn't on the ground 20 meters away from the guy that I was fighting. You know, my, my enemy was 15,000 feet below me. I mean, it was a little bit less personal. Um, I had to come to the, the understanding on individual missions, you know, I protected the I protected the guys on the ground. I'm proud to have, you know, in my small, very small way, you know, help protect those guys. Um, and so I had to find what the good was that I was doing. You know, what is it, and how am I, how am I contributing? How is the five months away from home worth it? And I've got the, you know, kind of added on the stress of uh, a baby on the way. And, you know, there's a lot of nights I'd be, you know, circling around our objective, you know, with the autopilot on, kind of looking at the things I was supposed to do in my targeting pod, and my mind would wander, you know, about my, my baby. I don't know. Um, how did I want to be as a dad? Uh, what did I want to tell the baby about what, who I was, what I had done? There was just a lot of, uh, a lot of added stress, I would say, in that, that deployment. But the due date was rapidly approaching, and I was talking to my commander. I'm like, sir, like, we're at the tail end of our deployment anyway. You know, my wife's about to have a baby. Like, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? He's like, all right, here's the deal. He's like, I want you to find a way home. Um, get on a C-130. Get yourself to al Udeed, and then find your way back to Germany. Um, I'm telling you, you can go. I find my way onto a C-130 to al Udeed. And uh, there's kind of a, like a decompression process. They, they want you to stay there for four or five days, and then they put you on an airplane home. Well, I didn't have that four or five days to wait because I knew that my wife was going to give birth. And so I'm like, I'm like, all right, I got to I gotta find my way onto an airplane. I'm like, just please put me on one of those airplanes. They're like, no, you, like you're scheduled a couple days out. I'm like, please. You know, I'm Captain Chisholm. My wife's about to give birth. Like, please, please let me go home. and. And there's this guy behind me, and he's kind of like inching forward, inching forward, inching forward, and I can see him out of the corner of my eyes. I'm getting a little frustrated. I'm like, man, what you doing? Like, don't, like, get out of here, bro. And uh, he's like, hey, you know, airman so-and-so, this is, uh, and he kind of looks over at my name tag, and he goes, this is Captain Chai Sam here. He's, uh, he's our Air Force guy. And I'm like, kind of looking at him kind of funny, and he, I could tell he wants me to be quiet, and he's like, yeah, this is my Air Force guy. He goes with us everywhere. Put him on our, our airplane. And she's like, really? And he's like, yep, airman, put that dude on our airplane. And she's like, all right. And so like this Marine Special Forces dude's like, hey man, we're getting on a C-17 in an hour and we're flying to Ramstein. Is that good enough? And I'm like, absolutely. So this dude, just out of the goodness of his heart, like lets me join them, all these Special Forces Marine guys that are rotating home back to the States. And these guys are the greatest human beings ever. Like they're all high-fiving me, you know, congratulations, you're having a baby, all these things. It was the greatest, like, you know, five hour trip or whatever back to Ramstein. And then my wife met me at the, uh, at Ramstein, uh, at the pastor terminal. Next day we go to the hospital and uh, my wife was in labor for the next four days. And so it's like Iraq and then baby. Imagine taking uh, me, fighter pilot. I am trained to uh, shoot down and defend myself from an air to air threat. Like that's what I'm trained to do. You know, I think I was barely competent to take care of myself. And now we've got this tiny human that we 
like that I'm responsible for and I'm a dad. You know, I started thinking about like life, you know, what that meant, like and I'm in the broader sense and and my wife that like, created this amazing, beautiful baby. And then, you know, it's it's the same kind of thing, like, you know, what do we do this all for? Um, you know, I got this tiny human and I'm holding this this baby and I don't think I'd really truly appreciated like life. Like the amazingness that is human life. <laughs>